G'day everyone. You know, one of the best things about being in watch forums is that you get to see a wider variety of watches from familiar brands up to micro brands. And it was during my casual browsing in one of these forums that I stumbled across the Rue HDS and I was really drawn to its bright and interesting design. I checked the Rue website and while they had some other great looking pieces, I was still smitten with the HDS and its two model with its matte black case and um, decided to add one to my collection. So without further ado, let's get into review. So just to run over the specs on this watch, we've got a case diameter of 41.5 millimeters, a case thickness of 9.2 millimeters, lug tip to lug tip of 48.6 millimeters, lug width of 22 millimeters, uh, 69 grams in weight on its silicon strap, a Miota 2315 quartz movement, sapphire crystal on top, and coming in at a price of uh, 170 US dollars. Okay, so to start off with the positives of this watch, the first thing I'll mention is not the watch itself, but the straps, or at least one of them. The HDS comes with two straps on them, and the first one is this black sport silicon style. Uh, with a lot of budget watches, the vendors normally give you a cheap and occasionally nasty strap or bracelet, and then you'd swap it out for something nice and aftermarket-y. But this silicon strap is something else. The front is this really cool looking circle pattern and it fits snugly on the wrist so there's no wriggle but it also wears light and doesn't chafe or feel hot and sticky after prolonged wear even up in the tropics here. I can honestly say this is one of the most comfortable straps I've ever worn and best of all it suits the watch perfectly and even has the branding on the buckle for good measure. The inclusion of quick release spring bars on both straps makes changing between strap styles a breeze too. The second strap is this nylon and leather combination, but I'll talk about that later. Uh, going back to the watch itself, the next great thing about it, of course, is the dial. If you've ever seen or owned a Braun watch, this design will look familiar, especially as Rue's website even mentioned that this piece was inspired by the German minimalist expression from Braun. But true to Rue's inspiration, there's also a bit of a racing flair added to the HDS, which makes it more of a unique design and not just another homage. Uh, the dial consists of two different layers, and in the centre of the piece you've got a graphite dial with the standard 12-hour Arabic numerals with 20-minute markers in between each hour, along with a slightly bolded marker against each hour. Layered on the top of this on the outer edges is a second layer of the dial in a black colour. Uh, printed on this outer layer are your minute markers of Arabic numerals present at every 10-second interval, along with a larger marker set in between the associated 5-minute intervals. Uh, the size of the numerals is just right, and their font style looks similar to what you'd find on a car's speedo. There is a fair bit going on in the style, but at the hour and minute markers between the dial types, they line up perfectly, and that black and graphite colour variation between the dials is really well done. There's just enough difference to be noticeable, but not too contrasting or garish. The hands are nothing like I've seen before though. The best way to describe them would be like the child product between batten hands and sword hands if they were in reverse. The hour and minute hands are in a bright white colour, while the seconds hand is a dark yellow, almost orangey colour. Uh, not only do they have a unique look, but they're also very legible and stand out in the dial to make reading the time a cinch on this thing. Now, best of all, the length of each hand is perfectly done, with each hand hitting their respective markers and just reaching, but not touching, their respective numeric time marker. The yellow contrast on the seconds hand also helps to add a bit of vibrancy and interest to that dial. Yeah, another neat minimalist touch is the dial branding, where you've got the Rue logo printed in the same yellow colour as the seconds hand in rising and falling font, and now the text on the dial. The logo is noticeable, but thanks to that rise in the middle font size, it helps to compress the spacing and prevents it from spreading out too far across the dial, which I kind of appreciate. And to round out the vibrancy on this dial, you've got a brighter yellow gasket ring in between the crystal and the bezel. And then I suspect this is done deliberately, as it adds another nice splash of colour to an otherwise darker dial, but without being overbearing. And with no complications present, this piece is pretty much the visual definition of uh, grab and go. The tonneau case shape fits very comfortably on the wrist and being only 69 grams and just over 9 millimeters in height you can only just feel its presence on your wrist. And the sapphire crystal is a nice bonus as well for extra durability. And finally the case back display is something that deserves mention. It's got the Rue logo in the middle of a plain circle but surrounding it in this outer circle with this kaleidoscope appearance is this checker pattern which is obviously another nod to the racing theme they've got going. It's an interesting pattern and a nice added touch to complete the look. And circle around the outer part of the case back are the specifications of the watch, including crystal, water resistance and movement. 
So looking at some of the mixed bag features and things to consider with the HDS, uh, the water resistance is 50 meters, which isn't too bad. It'll withstand water splashes, but I probably wouldn't go in the pool with this one. The black PVD coating looks really cool in this watch, but also bear in mind that any hard bumps or scrapes in the case will chip it away and it'll look pretty obvious too. In all honesty, with this scratch, I have no idea how I got it as I haven't been rough with it at all. But if it's a concern, you can always purchase its stainless steel rubber, the HDS-1. The Miyota 2315 movement powering this piece is capable and reliable, but it is still a simple movement. Nothing great, but nothing bad either. And finally, I'll mention the second strap, which is included, which has a nylon front and a leather back. It's not terrible, and it does wear comfortably initially, but I've found it does feel hot and chase a bit after prolonged wear. Uh, if this is the only strap it came with, I'd definitely be buying something aftermarket. And this is also where I segue into the negatives of the HDS. The grab-and-go convenience it offers comes with the drawback of having no complications whatsoever. And I have on more than one occasion glanced at the HDS to check the date before realizing that this feature isn't present. So if you're someone that actively uses day and date complications on their watch or pretty much a complication of any type, this watch may not be for you. The push-pull crown is unsigned and while I wouldn't expect this on a sub $200 watch, its bigger problem is that it's a bit too small. Uh, pulling the crown out to adjust the time requires a good fingernail slid behind and in between the case and the crown to engage it. And to adjust the time, you've really got to pinch that crown tight. There is a bit of gnarling around the edges to help with grip, but given its size, it really doesn't make much difference. The consolation, at least, is that once you've adjusted the time correctly, you'll never have to do it again unless the battery dies or you're moving between time zones. The last grumble I had, though, is the loom. On a full charge, the Arabic hour markers and hour and minute hands light up and stay well lit for about two minutes. After that, they die off very quickly. This video doesn't capture it too well, but I found the loom will last for about 10 to 15 minutes before it's completely lost. I kind of feel that room is an opportunity here and could have added more loom and included the minute tracks and markers for added effect, but I guess that'd bring up the cost of it too. But I reckon the HDS should either have had more loom put on it or not used any at all. Because it's kind of like your parents taking out for ice cream but only getting you a sample spoon. It's something, but it's just not enough. So for 170 US dollars, there's a lot to like about the HDS. It's very comfortable to wear, it's got an interesting and legible, well thought out dial, and it's also a watch that can be chucked on your wrist without a thought. But it is that dial that's going to be the make or break part of whether the HDS is worth the asking price, as the rest of the watch's features and specs are okay, but not great. To me, I reckon this would be a good casual watch for those who are looking to add an easy wearing, no fuss grab and go to their collection. But if you've owned a Roo watch before, are you thinking about getting one? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and um, thanks for watching, eh?